Shout it loud, hallelujah. Shout it, Jericho destroyed, hallelujah. Now let the person who wants the largest breakthrough here tonight shout it loudest, hallelujah. Let's close our eyes as we raise our two hands to the Lord and pray for ourselves in this song. Holy Ghost, do it do it again in my life. Jesus, who is he upon the truth? And pass me now to join to see if you're yeah, my own who cry. While on earth as thou art called, I you pass me. Savior, 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 Savior. Sing it loud and clear. My humble cry, why on earth as thou art called? Only do the past. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus, and my humble crown. And why on all as thou art called? Only do not pass me by. And I a great God. Where is a great king above all that our Lord is a great God, a great king above all that there is no There is no, there is no, there is no other God who lives on never, never die. There is no other God who never all other God. Yeah, the words of man, you are the holy one. Oh, yes, there is no way. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, yes, yeah, the words of man, you are the holy one. Made impossibility possible. He made impossibility. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rohi, he made impossible. Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Rafa, Jehovah Nisi, he made impossibility. Hallelujah, he made impossibility possible. Oh, yes, he made impossibility possible. Stretch your right hand to the heavenlies, beloved, and shout this louder than anyone around you. Every limitation. I signed against my life from the heavenlies. Scatter 
in the name of Jesus the limitation has signed against my life in the heaven let them be scattered let them be scattered deal with the limitations in Jesus name we pray wonderful God we thank you for a time like this and we praise your holy name for bringing us to yet another Wednesday revival accept our thanks in Jesus name we are gathered before your feet tonight. We want a word from heaven and a touch from heaven. Because we know that once we receive that touch, our lives will no longer remain the same. Accept our thanks in Jesus. Name. Lord, lay your hands upon us tonight. Open our understanding. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. This evening, I'd like you to listen very carefully because of the manner of prayers we need to pray. There is something called effort. Effort. Men and women do make effort to do one thing or the other. But then, when your effort has problems, then there is a general problem indeed. So tonight, we're talking about effort infirmities. Or if you like, the sick effort. Effort infirmities. Effort infirmities. In Isaiah chapter 16, verse 12. The first question to answer is what is an effort? I read from the book of Isaiah chapter 16, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 16, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 16 verse 12 says this And it shall come to pass When it is seen that Moab is weary on the high place That he shall come to his sanctuary to pray But he shall not prevail Let's read that again And it shall come to pass when it is seen that Moab is weary on the high place Moab had put up a lot of serious effort, but is now getting weary. Now he will now decide to come to the sanctuary even to pray. But even in that sanctuary too, he will have failed. What do we mean by an effort? An effort is an act. A, an earnest and serious activity to accomplish something. An effort is the use of your mental and physical energy in order to achieve something. An effort is an attempt. You make an attempt. An enterprise. Something you are struggling to do. An effort is like a campaign, a drive. So when somebody is sitting down and you know there is somewhere to go, there is a distance between you and that which you want to do, the distance between what you want to achieve and what you are achieving now. Anything you put up to ensure that you arrive at that goal is what men call effort. The message of tonight is being given for several reasons. The enemy has rearranged many people from the front to the back. A lot of people, churchgoers, have been diverted from their original destiny in life to another destiny. Many people who believe they are working hard are actually digging their own graves themselves. Many princes are trekking while there are plenty, plenty of servants on the horses. Many are fishing and catching nothing in the ocean of life. And then it is noticed that the good seed planted in the life of many have been eaten up by satanic birds. Many don't even know the real life they are supposed to be living if they knew the real life they're supposed to live, it would be very difficult to drag them out of the prayer room. It would be difficult to drag them out of the prayer room. They will be praying for a long, long time. Many have been converted to hewers of wood and drawers of water. There are plenty of deliverers who would dream every night of working hard and slaving away in their dream for some people they don't know. Plenty of Christians are singing the Lord's song in a strange land. And to be quite honest with you, I'm very sad to admit that the correct lot of many people are dead. 
Some who are claiming that, well, I thank God for what he has done in my life. But everyone's are just crying and say, why this one is rejoicing on level one when he's supposed to be rejoicing on level 40? Many are actually a shadow of what God wants them to be. They're not the real thing. In fact, to be quite honest with you, real people are very scarce these days. Many go about with internal suppressors, killing good things inside their lives. There are many who quote the Bible and confess the scriptures, but they are just claiming authority, but they are gaining no ground. Many are permanently depressed. They are just going about with heaviness, heaviness of the earth. So what's in the case, those who even claim to preach holiness, they are just going about with a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Many after they are real life, only in the dream. And many have been caged by the devil. Unfortunately, gradually, gradually and slowly, many are quietly accepting satanic substitute for their destiny. Just conclude that, well, there is nothing I can do. Many are laboring under the curse of powerless living. And the enemy has closed down the workshop of so many lives and so many businesses. And one way or the other, the devil has succeeded in silencing so many weapons of Christians. And as a minister, it is easy for you to see that the enemy has planted the stronghold of infirmities in so many people's bodies. And now the sad part of it. In many, many places, believers are below the ladder. Contrary to Deuteronomy 28.13. That you shall be the head and not the tail. And many are getting used to staying in that third region. Gradually getting used to living in the dark. You know that is a strength in about darkness. When somebody has stayed in darkness for a long time. Others sometimes will get used to seeing in that darkness. Many, 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 many Christians. Are just going between victory and defeat. Victory and defeat. Victory and defeat. Victory and defeat. And in many places, believers are losing their jobs. They will sack them. Children of darkness will take over. Believers are being harassed and pushed below. And many are losing even what they already have. The millions have not even found out what belongs to them. Many are climbing from nothing to nothing. No voice in the place of work. No voice where you are. And this is completely unacceptable. There is constant failure staring so many in the face. And many believers have become what you can call modern day slaves. Everything I'm telling you now is what I've noticed and is making me sad. Because this is contrary to what is in scripture. In Psalm 24 verse 1 which says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And if the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and we're children of that God. Then we have no business going through what we're going through. But when we are making efforts and the efforts are in trouble, then we don't get anywhere. Some people make efforts, but then they don't, they're not getting anywhere. Several things will happen to the efforts you are making. For example, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You will now find that the devil is not fleeing from you. What you should check is the resistance you are offering to him. When you, you say, you are doing things and you are not getting results. What you should check is the effort you are putting in. There are some people, their efforts can be demoted. He's trying, but after trying, 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 it will all end up in demotion again. Ends up in demotion again. Say, I want to, I, I, I cannot stay in this level. I've gotten the first degree. I must get the second degree. Because he got the first degree, he tried to look for a job, he couldn't find. So, okay, if I get a second degree, it will increase proof increase my chance of getting a good job now he got the second degree only for him to arrive at an interview say ah sorry you you are the best candidate the only problem now is that you are overqualified you are overqualified sorry so we're going to give it to somebody with a lower degree ah. he said please sir forget that higher degree use this lower one he said no that's against the law cannot underpay you sorry you have to go now sir he has made efforts. But what has the effort brought now? Demotion. Somebody's effort can be disturbed. At any time the person is making effort, something will come along the line and truncate the effort. And they won't be able to gather any effort to achieve anything. Somebody's effort can be derailed. You tried. 
but they've pushed you towards the wrong direction now. And so the effort is getting nowhere. Somebody's effort can be dominated by the power of darkness. So the person is making effort, but it's under a remote control power. It's not getting anywhere. Somebody's effort could be disgraced. The harder the person tries to move, it will end up in disgrace. There is something called quick sand syndrome. That is, if somebody gets into a quick sand or a muddy place and is sinking, every effort the person is making to come out will only pull him down. There is a quick sand syndrome. There are people like that. The more effort they make, the lower they get. The harder they try to go up, the, lower, the harder they fall down. Their legs will be searching for something inside the muddy water to hold. But there is nothing to hold. And they will be struggling, struggling, struggling. Therefore, every effort they are making to move on is cutting them down. Can you raise up your right hand to the heavenly beloved? And say this louder than anyone here. Every power, every power using my effort against me. Using my effort against me. In the name of Jesus. It is important to pray now. Because something has to happen here tonight. Because we are not here to play. And uh, we are here to joke. In Jesus name we pray. Somebody's effort can be wasted. Wasted. They wanted to throw a lady out of a matrimonial home. And the only excuse they had against her was that she could not cook. So very quickly she ran to the school of catering. And three months she began to learn, 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 learn. She now went back home now and started cooking properly. Only for the in-laws to come back. You see, she doesn't know anything. Only cook, cook, cooking, food. They were the ones that pushed her to go and learn it. Now she's cooking it. All those efforts were wasted. She said, I want this business to prosper. I don't have capital. And the person went to the bank. Used the only house he has to stand there in the bank. Bank gave money. She placed an order to buy shoes. Only for this rob, robber or wicked white men, they put children's shoes inside a container. Children's shoes, all of them. She ordered for adult shoes, they gave her children's shoes. And she couldn't sell. Debt. Bank wants to sell the house. So somebody advised her, go and take another loan again. And she took a larger loan now. Real larger loan. Only for 419 to move in and took all that money away. So every effort she made to prosper was wasted. An effort can be defeated. You make an effort, then immediately you start a counter force rises against you and they come and defeat that cause of action the person is doing. Somebody's effort can be discouraged. Somebody's effort can be frustrated. A person's effort can be rendered null and void. That this is rendered completely useless. Somebody's effort can acquire death. I know some people who will have remained alive today if not that when they prospered a little bit, they made effort to build a house in the village. They never completed the building. Their effort had led them to death. Can you raise up your right hand again and declare this louder than anyone here? Every power, Every power. using my efforts to threaten my life. You are a liar. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Marabo Sapa Lakata Lekatenda Kasa. Darana Kanda Sampola Bakaya Boshente Yaba. In Jesus' name we pray. Your effort can be killed by the enemy. Remember the story of Gideon who was threshing wheat and was hiding it in a wine press because the enemy just wait for them to grow everything that the enemy comes to waste the effort. Effort can be disillusioned and diverted. I know a brother when we were very young many years ago. This, this boy as a young person 
he had not gone to any technical school. He had not gone to anywhere to learn anything. If somebody's fan broke down, a pressing iron does not work. They call this small boy, and one way or the other, he will put it back to work. It was clear where his destiny should be. But one day, his mother took him to a prophet who prophesied under whatever anointing and said, You, this boy, you are a banker. And when you are a banker, you make so much money, build house for your father, build house for your mother, build house for this, build house for that. As I'm talking to you now, the last time I heard about this fellow, it was on the pages of the newspaper that he has been jailed for fraud. That was the last time I said, ah, this is so, so person. His effort has been dissolution and diverted. Somebody's effort can ignite violence. A lot of people might have been doing things and nobody's complaining. But really let this fellow start. There will be violence from hell against the person. Then, there is what we call effort farming. The person has been so deadened and rendered useless, he is not going to even make a positive effort. It's no effort at all. You just wake up, sleep, talk, 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 go back, sleep. 1 p.m. in the afternoon, he still has his pajamas on, wrapping towel around the waist. 1 p.m., 12 noon, while others are walking. He's not making any effort. He's suffering from effort famine. There is a group of spirits whose duty it is to make efforts sick. Let's look at these spirits in Joel chapter 1, verse 4. We should be getting ready to pray now because this message tonight is a prophetic one. And the idea is to usher so many people into where they should be. If you are not moving forward, what to check is the effort you are putting in. If your effort is sick, if that effort is dead, if that effort is negative, the person remains where he or she is. Joel chapter 1 verse 4. That which a palmer worm had left at the locust eating, and that which the locust had left at the canker worm eating, and that which the canker worm had left at the caterpillar eating. That which the palmer worm had left, then locust will eat. That which the locust made a mistake by leaving behind, the canker one would deal with it. And that which the canker one had left, the caterpillar now will now eat it. So that's why I said today is a day to battle against these terrible spirits. Some people call them locust spirits, but we call them effort destroyers. You need one weapon here in this service today. That weapon is what the white man calls desperation. Most people do not move towards God until they become desperate. Most people do not get their breakthrough until they begin to roar in desperate prayers. Low cost are terrible spirits. When they land on a farm, by the time they move and leave, that farm will be left as though the farmer never planted anything. Because they are batting spirits, they pass buttons. So once they want to start an attack, they move in the canker worm. That one is known as crawling locust. They are baby locusts. They crawl. They eat those things that are tender. They may not do much damage, but they will have eaten all those things that are soft. Later, the caterpillar now moves in. That one will complete the destruction of whatever is tender there and is slightly bigger than that one. Then the Pama one now goes in. The Pama one is the locust with the ability to chew. They are so terrible, they can prune or clip branches of a tree. At this stage, those Pama will have acquired some small, small wings. And at this stage, they've grown large enough to attack tree branches with their powerful mouth. And then the proper locusts will now take over. And when these locusts are sometimes flying in the sky, they fly in colonies, colonies, colonies. There could be up to 5 billion locusts flying in one colony. They multiply rapidly and they have destructive children. They will not say the farmer should not look for seed. They will not say the farmer should not look for the land. They won't say he should not look for manure or fertilizer. They won't say the man should not make effort. They will allow him to make all the efforts. And the billions of these terrible insects will now descend on that farm. When they now come down, by the time they finish with the farm, it will be as if the person never planted anything. Beloved, this array of spirits have been released against even the children of God. And there is only one way to battle them. The first method of battling these kind of spirits that waste efforts 
is fasting and prayer. There is no other method that can arrange war against local spirits. The first one is fasting and prayer. Apart from fasting and prayer, the other thing God wants you to do if you will battle with this kind of spirits is that God wants you to learn to use what you have. Use what you have. Elisha asked that woman, what do you have in your house? Elisha taught the widow that our meager resources can become an abundant flow. Sometimes what may look simple and insignificant to us can be multiplied beyond measure when you place it in the hands of the Lord. The trouble is that many of us think that we can only receive help from the outside, help from the outside, help from the outside, but there, right there where you are, there is still something you have that if you place it in the hands of God, will explode. Your meager resources is limitless in the hands of God. This woman came to Elisha crying. Said, I servant, my husband is dead. And the debtors are here. He said, what do you have in your house? The woman presented what she had. The answer to that woman's hopeless situation was right in her own house. So instead of focusing her attention outside to see for help, the prophet taught her to use what she already had at her disposal. God uses the resources that are available to us to fulfill the greatest purposes in our lives. Sometimes when you go to pick help from the outside and you don't know the origin of that assistance, the origin of that help, then you add what should not belong to your life to your life. You bring in the cacaworm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar. When you take bloody money, add it to your business. When you take negative effort, add it to your business. Then the enemy moves in because you have opened the door to that enemy. A lot of believers want to start everything in a big way. It's not possible. The Jew gets plenty of letters now from young, young pastors. Say, sir, we want you to be our mentor. We want you to groom us up. And then uh, the person that wrote a letter just now, I say he wants to learn, he wants to be groomed up. He won't say, excuse me, sir. I want you to lay hands on my head and pray. The next letter you get, I want to buy a keyboard. I want to buy a mixer. I want to buy this. I want to buy that. I need one million naira. They don't understand. They want to start everything in a big way. And many believers just fold their hands. Say, why are you not doing anything? Say, what I want to do, sir? I don't have capital. No capital. The devil will say, yes, you don't have capital. And that's it. Faith look at things as they are. And also see what they can become when those things are placed in the hands of God. So you want to heal your efforts you want to deal with the local spirits, the first thing is fasting and prayer. The second thing, that what you have, place it back into the hands of God. Let him prosper you so that you won't have negative things added to your life. And then trouble will start from there. I want you to understand that there are two kinds of breakthroughs. There are breakthroughs obtained from God. There are breakthroughs obtained from the devil. If your breakthrough will come from God, Know for sure that you must obey the principles of scripture. You must obey the principles of scripture. So third key if you want to deal with the locust is that you must allow dishonesty to die in your life. All forms of falsehood must disappear. And you have to rely on the Lord your God so that he can move you to where he wants to move you. Many of the efforts we are making need one form of deliverance or the other. And this is why it hasn't succeeded to move us to where we should be. Tonight, I told you we are going to pray. I want to stop speaking now because I want to give sufficient time for the prayers. Rise up on your feet, beloved. We are here so that the locust powers can be completely dismantled. We are here so that those who are supposed to be flyers but have been converted to chicken can cut off the chicken wings and grab the wings of the eagle. We are here at this highly prophetic meeting for children of God to forcefully usher in greater wealth into their lives. There is nothing you are doing now that your God cannot multiply beyond your comprehension. All eyes closed. But if you are here tonight and you are not born again, you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus, wherever you are, just raise up your right hand so that I can pray with you. Those of you raising up your right hand, 
say what I'm going to say now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you tonight. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye-bye to the devil. In Jesus' name, amen. The first thing I'd like you to do is that wherever you are now, bow down your heads and ask the Lord to forgive you in any area where you have allowed the canker worm, the parma worm, the caterpillar to move in into your life. Ask him to forgive you. That tonight, all this canker worm, parma worm, caterpillar, local spirit must die. All these spirits address your efforts that have refused to let your efforts bring fruit. It is time for you to react against them. It is time for you to react against them. We are not here this evening to play. We are here for a strongly prophetic meeting. In Jesus' name we pray. Three things are going to happen now, especially after this first prayer point. Please take special note of these words that I'm saying now. The first thing that will happen if you pray this prayer from your heart, that the Lord will give you wisdom ideas that will make you the leader in whatever business you are involved in. The second thing that will happen is this. As we pray this prayer, those who have never received any genuine help before, all of a sudden from a place you don't expect, your help will arise. The next thing that will happen is this. As we pray this prayer, there are those here who have lost their jobs unrighteously, unjustifiably. All of a sudden, those who got rid of you will have no rest. And you will get another letter inviting you back. Those three things will begin to happen. Immediately you start praying this prayer now. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Arise! Deliver my efforts. Can I hear the sister shouting it loud and clear? Marapo da Cassandra. Brothers, shout it louder than the sisters. Masekaya Boshente Yaba. Everybody together. Allah. In the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance of your efforts. Enough is enough. Masetokaya Boshente Rabaka. Yes. It's up there already. It's up there already. It's up there already. Mato sekate ya bo shende ya ba. Continue. Maso poko ya ba. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Arise. Deliver my efforts. Deliver my efforts. Deliver my efforts. Maso poko ya bo shende ya ba kaya ba. Yes, yes, yes. Spirit of the living God. Move, 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 move. In Jesus' name we pray. There are three persons here. Within the next one week, you will get this international job that will be 50 times your present salary. Let me congratulate those three persons. Those things are happening. Thank you, Jesus. Say this the way I'm going to say it. If God needs to retire people to move you forward, let him retire them. If God needs to sack, let him sack them. If he needs to kill, let him kill. The important thing is that his children must possess their possession. If you need to retire, retire people. If you need to sack, sack people. Anything you want to do, do it. So that I can move forward by fire. 
In the name of Jesus. Masikayabo shenterabakayaba. Aha, aha, aha. Yes. Look at what is happening. Look at what is happening. Aha, 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 aha. Aha, 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 aha. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, it's happening. It's happening. Sisters, shout this louder than anyone around. Every locust power of my father's house. Sisters, I want you to shout this loud and clear. That's right. Brothers, shout it louder than the sisters. In the name of Jesus, deal with the locust power. It must have no effect upon your life. It must have no effect. 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 Masakaya bo shentera bakaya ba. Ribosa The locust power of my father's house. Da! 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Masopoko ya bo shentera bakaya ba. Maraba soponeka. Yes, yes. Deal with that power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. In Jesus' name we pray. Look at what is happening again. Look at what is happening again. I see some people moving from their present position to the topmost positions where they are. Aha. I say, sister here. If the wares in your shop will sell, you will never, never be hungry again. But as a strong man assigned to the door of your shop, seven different times they brought sacrifices to that shop. They buried it there, but you didn't know. But right now, all the powers that brought the sacrifices, they themselves have been buried alive. And you are coming back to give testimonies. For everything you have inside will sell. Yes. That's right. I someone is saying in her mind. Say, but, uh, but my own is a school. Yes. The strong man assigned to the gate of that school has been buried alive. Shout this loud and clear now. Every witchcraft agenda on my efforts. Can you shout it loud and clear? You are a liar! There! In the name of Jesus! Open your mouth! Open your mouth! Don't be afraid! That's why you are here! That's why you are here! Masekatea Boshentera Ria Bokapi Alikasa Manakara Bosoponde Kayaba Boshente rabo kopola boko raba. Basente kaya boshente yaba. Masaria kapola ka. Mora boko sente yabo shanda. Makaribo seponde kaya boshente yaba. Yes, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Huh? You see? So what is happening now? Amen. Now listen to this. Don't say, I don't think this concerns me. Say this loud and clear. Every strange object in my house that is militating against my efforts can I hear you shouting this loud and clear? Uh huh. Uh huh. You will now shout, manifest! Da! 
Can I hear you saying this loud and clear? I want you to put your emphasis on manifest. Yeah. Now open your mouth and begin to pray. Yes. Command it to manifest and to die. Aha. That is how to do it. Command it to manifest and die. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Masopala Katara Bokoya Boshanta, Rabosoponda Kaya Boshante, Makaponda Sataya Boshanta Yabokolaba, Manakatanda Rabosom Polaba, Barika Sempelaba. Yes, 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 yes. The serpent in the house be disgraced, be disgraced, be disgraced. Be disgraced, be disgraced, be disgraced, be disgraced. The serpent in the house, be disgraced. Mashikarabo Sampande Kayaba. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are here tonight and the enemy has stationed a strong man against your academic life, they say, Go and get five credits. You put in so much effort that they gave you all the credits in the area, you don't need them. You want to read medicine. They are passing you in Yoruba. Wastage of effort. Pray this prayer. Pray it with holy anger. And see what the Lord will do within the next 10 days. Shout this loud and clear. The power of the emptiers. The power of the wasters. Can you shout those two things loud and clear? Your time is up. There. In the name of Jesus, deal with those two powers. Makarebo sateka, manaka tenda kaya bo shente yaba, bo setende kaya bo shente yaba. Yes, 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 yes. Masikaya bo shende rabo kusunto. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 10 brothers here and 15 sisters. Your virtues were stolen through the avenue of sex with occultic agents. Something is happening to you right there where you are. The power of God is coming upon you. And the yoke of that wasting power is broken now. I see rope around the waist of somebody over there. The rope is being cut to pieces. Every power! This is the final prayer point here tonight. Every power! Working against my efficiency! Can you shout this loud and clear? You are wasting your time. Die! In the name of Jesus. Yes. Masakaya bo shente raba. Maraka ponda kaya bo shente raba ka. Borike sepele kaya bo shente. Marna rabo kosonto yaba. Masikaya ba. Shite se kaya bo shente raba karaba. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout this loud and clear. I shall get to my promised land. I shall get to my promised land. No matter what the devil may say. I shall get to my promised land. I shall get to my promised land. I shall get to my promised land. No matter what the devil may say, I shall get to my promised land. Hallelujah. 
get to my promised land. I shall get to my promised land. No matter what the devil may say, I shall get to my promise. Hallelujah. To my promised land. No matter what the devil may say, I shall get. Yeah, 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 yeah. To my promised land. I shall get to my promised land. No matter what the devil may say, I shall get to my Hallelujah, I get to my promise. No matter what the devil may say, I shall get to my promise. Land. Thank you, Jesus. Let us share the grace in fellowship.